that together they're a statistically significant canonical uh, variant. But when it looks at just two and two, two, uh, two to two, this is really the second canonical variant minus the first canonical variant. So it's only the, it's the second canonical variant on its own. It's got a Wilkes lambda of 0.99 with an f of, I hate that double click thing that pops up. I wish I can get rid of it. Uh, a, a an f value of 0.6256 and it's not statistically significant. So this second eigenvalue and canonical correlation, or eta, is not statistically significant. Only the first one is. Well, let's, ac let's actually look at what this canonical ca variant is. Oh, b before I go on to that, uh, SPSS in the old school MANOVA uh, syntax also does a series of ANOVAs. So these are the same ANOVAs on the de nine dependent variables. So just one way ANOVA, it's just like the GLM did. So this is what the actual um, canonical variant looks like. Now GLM also creates this, it just doesn't report it. If you do MANOVA through the GLM, this is how it actually does the crux of the analysis. It just doesn't report this interesting information. So these are basically like unstandardized regression weights in a multiple regression. We can see that uh, they're all negative except for one, and that's actually arbitrary. You can actually flip the negative uh, values to positive and switch this one to negative for memory one, and it would still have the same meaning. You just have to have the same direction uh, switched over for all of them that had the same, that had congruent uh, negatives are switched to positives, and positives are switched to negatives, and that's fine if you want to interpret the uh, the canonical function or what SPSS calls the discriminant function. I'll get to this in a minute. All right. So this is the unstandardized. So just like in multiple regression, you don't usually interpret the unstandardized regression weights. You want to interpret the standardized. Well, SPSS also provides us with the standardized uh, discriminant function coefficients. And we can see that it's verbal test 2 and 3, as well as spatial 1, that are really carrying the weight of this uh, canonical variant, this discriminant function. Uh, so this is what the the differences between the means in the independent variable the super variable that the manova created is really as mostly a combination of verbal 2 and verbal 3 and spatial 1 now again because they're all negative and only one of them is is, is uh, positive you could switch these all to positives except for this one and switch it to negative so you'd be saying higher scores on verbal and 2 and higher scores on verbal 3 and higher scores on spatial one seem to be what PhD students and uh, master students and undergrad students are really differing on. It's some kind of uh, super variable that's relying a lot on verbal two and three and spatial one. And who knows, maybe these are more reasoning based types of uh, intelligence tasks. And because um, to move your way up from undergrad masters to PhD, you need more reasoning skills, you need more capacity to solve problems. Maybe that's why this canonical variant is coming out the way it is, and that's the informative portion of it. It's not just any type of intelligence, uh, it's a particular type of intelligence, and I'm saying it's because verbal 2, 3, and spatial 1 are more reasoning based, that's what's discriminating amongst the education levels the most. It's not just any, um, it's not all the, the uh, intelligence scores equally. Now, the another way to interpret the values is to use uh, the correlations between the dependent variables and the canonical variant. Now, again, the fact that these are all negative is arbitrary. They could have been all positive, uh, and, and in fact, they're all positive. They're all negative. And that's because inter intelligence tests tend to all correlate with each other positively. So this uh, super variable that was created based on, really, it was actually created based on the unstandardized coefficients, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But this super variable that was created, uh, actually all dependent variables correlate with this super variable. Uh, 
And this is proving that. And the fact that it's negative is just saying it's arbitrary. We could flip these over and say it's positive. So the higher you score on the canonical variate, or the supervariate,